Okay, ladies and gentlemen, well, you can just find your seats. We're going to get started. Feeling you're most welcome to join as well. Um, some new faces here, some old ones for the uh, repeat faces. I want to thank you again for coming to IWP and for attending our lecture series. And we have the special honor and privilege to be welcoming back uh, current students. Is that correct? Or no, no, no. Oh, forgive me, <laughs> alumnus of IWP. And uh, for those of you who do not know who we are or what we do, we are a graduate school of statecraft and national security affairs. And we focus on teaching the full spectrum of national power and as well as its uh, ethical uh, conduct. So today's topic and lecture is going to be on the Slovenian War of Independence. And, uh, to that end, our speaker, Mr. Babik, will be providing a, another perspective to use his, his words. And uh, who is Mr. Babik? Well, he was born in um, Maribor, Slovenia. And after graduating high school, he studied in uh, Austria, Vienna, for uh, his degree in political science. And um, he uh, has a great deal of passion in the area in which he'll be speaking about today, and as well, he also has first-hand experience, which uh, I'm sure will um, be very interested to hear his perspective. Uh, and lastly, I want to add that um, his, uh, his areas of current research pertain to the EU. Uh, Tibor, I sat in on one of your integration lectures. I found that very interesting with Slovenia um, some months ago, and uh, he is talking about EU relations as it pertains to world order. So without further ado, Thank you so much for coming back, and let's please give him a warm welcome. Uh, thank you very much for all, uh, all of you for coming. Um, I'm really pleased to talk here again. I've um, been here now for two years, and uh, IWP was a great experience. So I'll be talking about the Slovenian War of Independence. Um, I'll be really talking about the events that happened immediately uh, after the Socialist Republic of Slovenia declared uh, independence uh, from Yugoslavia to become an autonomous and independent state uh, on June 25, 1991. Uh, my goal is to talk about the war and the political uh, process that took place during the war and immediately after the war, especially uh, when the emotions were still high and uh, uh, emotional still present. I also conducted a couple of interviews with people who uh, also really experienced the war. I was a little bit too small to really <laughs> understand everything. Uh, so I will also give uh, a perspective that was uh, in the war from books and from uh, researchers, from uh, different uh, people in, during that phase uh, and who were really talking and giving their perspective uh, with emotions uh, of becoming an uh, independent uh, state. Good, independent state of Slovenia. Uh, so, uh, on the first picture, uh, it is in Slovenian, I know, but uh, that's the document, that's the plebiscite uh, that took place on the 23rd of December 1990. Uh, and it's asking uh, the people of Slovenia if they want to become an independent and autonomous state. The possible answers of yes and no. So, a sec, uh, actually the plebiscite took place on the 23rd of December, uh, but uh, the results were published on the 26th uh, of December uh, and Slovenia, uh, so the population uh, decided with an overwhelming majority of 88.5% and 95% of all eligible voters that Slovenia should become independent. So the Slovenian War of Independence uh, did not actually start on the 27th of June 1991 as it was. It is mostly uh, in historical books but probably much sooner, or actually a month sooner, where there was movement uh, on the military basis of the Slovene, uh, on Slovenian soil in Maribor, uh, in Pekre, which is a part of Maribor, 
uh, where uh, there was a lot of movement uh, and the soldiers tried to leave their bases to go to strategic points uh, in, uh, around the city. Historically, it is also uh, actually not a wonder that this happened exactly in Maribor because already in 1918, uh, the Slovenian uh, general, Rudolf Meister, uh, actually saved Slovenia from Austrian hegemony or even uh, occupation. Uh, in 1941, also only three days after Adolf Hitler visited the city, uh, the first insurrection happened exactly also uh, in Maribor. Uh, the war uh, was carried out by the Yugoslav People's Army, and was of course a war against democracy, uh, and it showed actually that the army had the real power in uh, Yugoslavia, and not the government. Uh, the generals of the Yugoslav army in the 1990s even went so far that they established their own uh, communist party that was called uh, Communist Coalition, a movement for Yugoslavia. Uh, it can be also argued that the war uh, could have been started in 1988 uh, when a Slovenian, uh, his name was Ivan Borsner, uh, worked at uh, the Yugoslav army and sent a top secret document to a Slovenian weekly newspaper and this uh, newspaper then published uh, actually an invasion plan uh, that, was, that was planned to be carried out in Slovenia to preserve socialism and communism in uh, this country. Yeah. Uh, the day when dreams were allowed. This picture was taken at the festivities of, uh, after the Declaration of Independence. Uh, in front, walking is the first Slovenian president, uh, Milan Kuchan, uh, who uh, actually, yeah, Milan Kuchan, who became the first president of Slovenia. Uh, so, as I already mentioned, on June 25th, 1991, the Slovenian parliament declared Slovenian independence. And uh, in the declaration, the parliament uh, said, among other things, that Slovenia is now an independent an autonomous state, that the constitution of the Socialist Federal, uh, Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia uh, doesn't exist anymore, and that international borders uh, of Slovenia, uh, actually international borders of Yugoslavia uh, with Austria, Italy, and Hungary and are now international borders uh, of Slovenia, and that Slovenia has a national border, uh, to the, a new national border to the south of Croatia. Uh, the next morning, Slovenia has started to replace signs. Uh, they were saying, this is the territory of Yugoslavia, with signs, this is the ter territory of Slovenia. This started also first tensions uh, between border policemen uh, from Yugoslavia, or actually Serbia and Slovenia, who even the day before were actually working together to uh, preserve uh, common country that didn't exist anymore. Uh, also, on this first day, uh, many army, uh, army corps and especially tanks from the Yugoslav army started to move uh, from Croatia towards Slovenia. Uh, many more left bases in Slovenia to move towards strategic points, and especially toward the capital city of uh, Ljubljana and uh, the second biggest city of Maribor. Uh, <clears throat> the Slovenian uh, civil population uh, from the beginning was engaged in the war and started to uh, build barricades with everything they could get their hands on, uh, including trucks, including uh, heavy machinery, and of course also uh, anti-tank uh, barricades. So, in the evening of the 26th of June, uh, at the festiv festivities, the uh, picture that was shown before, uh, the president, uh, the first president of Slovenia said, with birth, a human gets the right to dream. With the work, he gets the right to connect life and dreams. Yesterday, we connected both. For us, for many generations of Slovenians, which long ago have dreamed the same dream, and for the future generations, we will build a new world on these dreams. Since yesterday, Slovenes had their own country. Today, dreams are allowed. Tomorrow is a new day.
from shots fired. This picture uh, is taken in Maribor on the 27th of June, uh, 1991. Uh, and it's showing uh, how the population was starting to build uh, barricades to stop the movement of the tanks and the mil uh, Yugoslav military uh, at their uh, bases, uh, which in many points was successful, but of course not always. So on June uh, 27, the war started according to an advanced prepared plan of the Yugoslav People's Army. In Maribor and in Ljubljana, for example, the um, officers uh, had sealed documents that uh, had the uh, invasion plan of uh, Slovenia in them. Uh, the federal government of Yugoslavia also gave uh, the formal cover for uh, the attacks, uh, whereby the protection of the Yugoslav constitution, the Yugoslav borders in Slovenia were the main strategic uh, points. Uh, the army, so the Yugoslav army tanks uh, went on streets towards, as I said, strategic important points in Slovenia, toward the borders and toward uh, telecommunication towers and toward the three biggest cities. Uh, that's Maribor, Ljubljana and Celje. The territorial defense, uh, the Slovenian police and the Slovenian population were from the first day uh, really prepared to fight. Uh, they also had, so actually the territorial defense had a great opera, uh, cover operation uh, where they a couple of days before uh, the declaration of dependence was official, uh, the waste management in the capital city of Ljubljana went on a strike. Uh, so, in order for the city not to drown in uh, waste, uh, the waste management from Graz, from Austria, came to help them out. But in reality, the trucks, I don't know now exactly the number, but 50 or something trucks were actually filled with uh, weapons and munition for uh, the territorial defense. <clears throat> so the first day of combat uh, reached its heights towards the evening uh, when uh, there was a lot of fallen soldiers on both sides. Uh, but also already the first day uh, showed something uh, nobody was really, or the Yugoslavian army wasn't really prepared for, and that was that everybody in Slovenia, including the civil population, was prepared to fight against the aggressor. Uh, so the president, uh, so the first Slovenian president summed the events of the first day by saying, it came to an aggression against an independent and sovereign republic of Slovenia, and we have to counter this aggression with all means at our disposal, even with weapons. Uh, during the first day, Dimitri Rupel, who was the foreign minister of the Republic of Slovenia, uh, talked with the foreign minister of Austria, Alois Mok, who, and asked him for international support. Mok, uh, Mok was later on talking to uh, the European community to help Slovenia or to gain awareness of the situation in Slovenia and to gain help for uh, Slovenia around uh, Europe. Additionally, also the Slovenian Parliament sent a letter to, to European governments and to the European Parliament to inform uh, them about the current situation in Slovenia. Uh, this picture shows uh, mostly the parking lot of the civil uh, airport in Pernik that's close to Ljubljana. Shortly after an airstrike uh, of the um, Yugoslav Armed Forces. So on June 28, 1991, uh, the Yugoslav army increased their brutality uh, by attacking strategic points, uh, the territorial defense and the civil population, uh, but it also, and it also used planes to, as I already mentioned, uh, to attack the civil airport. And the Slovenian government uh, criticized this as um, a terrorist act uh, by a foreign state. Uh, and again, the, the army, the Yugoslav army, was surprised with what eagerness uh, the Slovenian population was fighting the aggressor. 
On the diplomatic side, uh, President Kuchan and uh, the Yugoslav People's Army Admiral Stane Trobe agreed on a ceasefire by 9 p.m. But this ceasefire uh, was not honored by the Yugoslavian army, uh, so fighting continued during the night and the next day. And the Yugoslav army even went so far that they, uh, they were actually using Red Cross trucks to capture uh, territorial defense soldiers or even uh, negotiators. The Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia's aggression was also the main topic in Luxembourg, uh, where a two-day summit of the European community was taking place. Uh, and the foreign minister of Luxembourg, Italy, and Holland flew to Belgrade uh, to talk about the federal uh, to the federal leadership to Kuchan, Milosevic, and Tujman. Kuchan is the president of Slovenia, Tujman is the president of Croatia, and Milosevic is the president of Yugoslavia. Because on the 25th of uh, June, 1991, uh, also Croatia declared uh, its independence. Uh, the three uh, presidents, in the end, didn't meet in Belgrade, because uh, Tuj uh, Tujman and Putin said, uh, they have nothing to do with Belgrade anymore, and they uh, actually, for security reasons, don't want to go to uh, this city. So they met uh, a couple of days later in Zagreb, which is the capital of Croatia. Uh, <clears throat> the three ministers uh, were actually also talking about that a uh, peaceful resolution needs to be found, uh, only with negotiations and uh, talks. On this same day, many Slovenian soldiers and officers, also generals of the Yugoslavian People's Army, took the step to move from or to quit uh, the Yugos uh, Yugoslav Army and go to the Slovenian defense to protect their uh, home country. Uh, most notable was Drago Brentic, who was actually uh, the main uh, person in the Yugoslav Army for the defense of the Slovenian airspace and the Croatian, uh, part of the Croatian airspace. And he said that he cannot continue his duties, especially not if uh, the army is attacking his home country. Uh, another example is when uh, there was a, actually a colonel, an Air Force colonel was tasked to even bombard his hometown city in Slovenia. Uh, when they flew from Belgrade, Belgrade with fellow, when he flew from Belgrade with fellow um, pilots, he forced them to drop their ammunition into a close by river of the city, and for them to return back to uh, Serbia and to Belgrade. And he, but he stayed in Slovenia. Uh, So Serbian authorities, especially the Yugoslav People's Army, during the 29th uh, of June, uh, played also a dirty propaganda uh, game. They were saying that uh, Slovenia and Slovenian doctors are not helping uh, so uh, Yugoslav soldiers, what in the end was not true, because uh, the soldiers who were then released from the hospitals said they were treated with respect and uh, got the care they needed. Uh, later uh, that day, uh, General uh, Yugoslav Army General Andrija Rasheta also talked to the Slovenian Defense Minister Janis Janša and Mr., uh, Minister for Interior Igor Baucar about uh, how to realize a ceasefire. Both sides uh, named their main points, and uh, this was actually a 12-point document that included conditions such as the safe passage for Slovenian soldiers. Uh, to, move, to come back to Slovenia, uh, repaying the war damage caused by uh, the Yugoslav army on Slovenian soil. And on the other hand, the, Slovenian, uh, the Yugoslav army included conditions such as normal life conditions for uh, soldiers, their soldiers in Slovenia. But there was uh, one point that Slovenia could, of course, not agree to, 
and uh, that was to return the border uh, as it was before the Declaration of Independence. Uh, in the same night, the Slovenian Parliament uh, denied the 12-point document and uh, proposal. And because there was also um, another proposal in this 12-point document, was also that Slovenia should wait for another three months uh, with uh, the Declaration of Independence. <clears throat> During the same day, uh, representatives of the Slovenian government had many diplomatic appointments considered to be really uh, vital uh, for uh, the resolution of the crisis. Uh, they met with Renato Altissimo, who was the general secretary of the Italian Liberal Party, uh, who visited Ljubljana and expressed support. Uh, also, the Italian representative of the European Parliament visited the capital of Slovenia and assured he is in intensively working on a Slovenian recognition throughout Europe. Um, Janez Drnošek, who was uh, the member of the Yugoslavian uh, government, but now, after Slovenian independence, because he was Slovenian, he was the member of the Slovenian government. Talked also with Austrian uh, Chancellor Franz Branicki, the German Foreign Minister Hans Dieter Genschner, uh, Secretary General of the Council of Europe, um, and with the Greek Foreign Minister, who all said they got to support uh, the war, this actually the independence of Slovenia. Uh, Milan Kuchan, uh, the first president, also sent a letter to the UN General Secretary, Javier Perez, and asked for support. On June, uh, on June 30th, July 1st and July 2nd, uh, the fighting continued with high intensity. And on July 1st, 1991, the uh, Yugoslav army uh, started threatening Slovenia with even, uh, with even more uh, false statements. They said that uh, army personnel, army command, units and institutions of the armed, uh, Yugoslav armed forces found themselves in an extremely difficult situation in Slovenian soil. Government authorities and armed groups of the Slovenian territory are threatening them as occupying forces. In the attack on Yugoslav army members and their families, they are using methods that, are, uh, that were even not used by the fascists and are also forbidden by the international law. Slovenia is refusing to help uh, um, Yugoslav army personnel, is refusing water and food supply, is uh, arresting uh, person, uh, personnel and their families on the streets, is breaking into their homes, is planting explosive, and is taking children and other family members as hostages. The Slovenian leadership was informed uh, that we will take uh, that we will react to every threat with military response. Uh, this statement actually showed that uh, Yugoslavia had actually no excuse for the military aggression. Uh, and so they had to build their own uh, that was actually based on lies. Uh, so after this statement, they started uh, a new attack and they even used uh, helicopters marked as Red Cross helicopters and attack civil population and uh, military objects. Uh, July 2nd, 1991 is marked as the day of the heaviest bombardment. Uh, the Yugoslav People's Army attacked civ uh, civilian targets and especially communication infrastructure because Slovenia actually played a really good uh, media war against Yugoslavia and was informing not only other parts of Yugoslavia, other countries uh, of Yugoslavia, but also the world, what is happening in uh, Slovenia. Uh, it was also in the afternoon of the same day when the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia's <laughs> government started to feel pressure for their, from their population in Belgrade, because many of uh, the parents of the soldiers who were in Slovenia stormed the parliament and demanded from uh, the government to bring them back home. Uh, there were, of course, also many who were pro-war because they were saying that Slovenia is destroying the nation-state and communism in uh, Yugoslavia. Uh, internationally, Slovenian positions also uh, strengthened and Slovenia got more support. 
uh, Milan Kuchan and Moise Petrle, who was the first Prime Minister of Slovenia, uh, taught with Ante Markovic, who was at the time the Prime Minister of Yugoslavia, and realized, uh, and Markovic actually realized that the measures Yugoslavia was taking at that point were counterproductive because the more aggressive they were, the more closely Slovenia stepped together. Uh, the outcome was that Markovic promised uh, the return of the pers uh, army personnel to their bases and back home, but this in the end didn't happen for uh, quite a while. Uh, international Slovenian position strengthened also uh, with the SPD party in Germany, uh, who started their support to recognize Slovenia, uh, Slovenian independence. The Swiss government expressed their disagreement about the war in Slovenia and uh, Austrian diplomacy. Austria was actually extremely helpful for the Slovenian cause and the Slovenian independence. Uh, they uh, played a really major role uh, to help Slovenia gain independence and recognition throughout Europe. <clears throat> so they were talking, uh, the Austrian diplomacy was talking uh, about the crisis internationally and tried to influence, uh, influence also the cons conservative thinking of the, of the rest of Europe. Uh, one of the conservatives was Spanish Prime Minister Felipe González, who expressed fear that the independence uh, wishes of Slovenia and Croatia would spread across Europe and inspire other countries to follow. I don't know what's wrong with democratization, but okay. <laughs> uh, the three ministers were uh, also were again meeting uh, with all parties to strengthen all, uh, to actually to accept the conditions they were already talking about. The Yugoslav government under the president uh, Message accepted the decision of now only six points, not 12 points anymore, and most notably denying the already achieved independence and sovereignty of the Republic of Slovenia. The decision also demanded that Slovenia needs to allow the federal government officials to resume their work at the Slovenian borders, but that that point was not possible at all anymore because President Kuchan and the European community also already signed a document that granted these borders to Slovenia. <clears throat> Austria also demanded a meeting of the 35 participating states uh, of the Conference of Sec uh, on Security and Cooperation in Europe uh, because of the activities of the, arm of the Yugoslav army in Slovenia and also because the Yugoslav army uh, violated the Austrian airspace. Uh, because when they were trying to uh, bombard Slovenia, they were flying too far into the Austrian airspace. Uh, on the other hand, the Yugoslav delegation accused Austrian companies for delivering weapons to Slovenian, uh, Slovenians in February of 1991. But yeah, actually really happened. <clears throat> the, air, the Yugoslavian Air Force uh, also did everything to stop German Foreign Minister Genscher uh, from coming to Slovenia on July 2nd. Uh, but Kuchan and Gen uh, Gen uh, Genscher meet nonetheless in Filak in Austria to finalize uh, their points about security uh, that Genscher was actually to present to the Conference on Security and Cooperation of Europe. <clears throat> In the afternoon, the Slovenian parliament accepted suggestions of the Yugoslavian government, uh, the acceptance of a four-point document, uh, later proved to be really important for Slovenia. So the, from the 12-point document, they came to a six-point document, and the end to a four-point document. Uh, these four points, uh, under number one, was immediate ceasefire, or uh, the latest by 9 p.m. Number two, the separation of the Yugoslav army and the Slovenian territorial defense. Uh, number three, the release of all prisoners. Num and number four, talks on a higher level of uh, Yugoslavia, of this Yugoslavian government, which should solve uh, the uh, remaining open questions. Uh, also, that was actually also the first day when the US uh, commented on the situation in Yugoslavia. 
the U.S. standpoint, standpoint was clearly against the violence, but the U.S. also said that um, Yugoslavia actually has to resolve their problems by itself, uh, but they will support uh, democratization and the will of the people. <coughs> so, uh, the following days uh, were days of relaxation and ceasefire. Uh, on July 3rd, 1991, first signs of ceasefire were visible. Uh, however, the generals, uh, actually the army general Rashid informs uh, Slovenia that military helicopters in cooperation with the Red Cross will fly over Slovenia to evacuate uh, wounded and dead soldiers. Um, during the day, many responses from other governments reached Slovenia and the world. Almost everyone called for a suspension uh, of violence. Uh, however, the British uh, minister, uh, Douglas Hurd, uh, said that, Slovenia and Croatia, uh, that uh, Great Britain will not recognize Slovenia and Croatia because creating small countries uh, on the territory of Yugoslavia is not possible un under uh, current circumstances. He even declined a possible military intervention and said that if Slovenia, Serbia, and Croatia decided for a civil war, they should fight it. <clears throat> On July 4th, uh, all fighting stopped. However, the war was not over, and at least not on the diplomatic front. Uh, in the morning, the first part of the uh, permanent ceasefire negotiation ended. Uh, the outcome was the ceasefire need to be respected. Uh, that both parties need to inform each other about possible uh, incidents and that further negotiations are needed to permanently resolve the crisis. Also, the three ministers visited Ljubljana uh, on, the day, on the same day to prepare everything necessary for European observers uh, who would make sure that ceasefire, uh, that both, uh, both parties are uh, taking measures for ceasefire. Uh, in the afternoon, the Yugoslav presidency uh, discussed the political security issues in Slovenia and among other things demanded that Slovenia immediately or no later by July 7th uh, returns the border control back to Yugoslavia. And uh, of course, again, this was a point that was already off the table because uh, Slovenian border uh, was recognized by the European community. end of the war. In this picture, we can see to the uh, back left is uh, Foreign Minister Rupel. To the right is President Kuchan. Uh, down left is Janis Jancha, who is the Minister of Defense. And to the right, uh, Loisa Petrele, uh, who is the first Prime Minister of Slovenia. And this picture was taken uh, during the ratification of the Brioni Declaration. Uh, I'll talk about the declaration uh, soon. So the, event, uh, the events that were happening between July 5th and July 7th uh, marked the end of the war in Slovenia. Uh, on July 5th, many leaders, not just in Europe, but also all around the world, asked for the violence, uh, violence to stop and demanded uh, that the Yugoslav army returns to their bases. Uh, at the Congress of the Security and Cooperation in Europe, 35 member states passed the, uh, two resolutions which set a special mission to Slovenia, which would really mediate uh, at future negotiations. On July 6, the most important happening were the talks about the return of the Slovenian border to, the, to Yugoslavia. Slovenia, of course, was no, under no circumstance willing to accept this. Uh, despite really heavy military threats of the Yugoslavian army. Uh, but on the other hand, Slovenia was also prepared to make some uh, compromises that were then uh, ratified in the Brioni Declaration the next day. Uh, the declaration, among other things, declared that Slovenian police will take control over the borders of the Slovenian territory, uh, that Slovenia will wait for three months before uh, being fully independent and recognized state, and the ceasefire is most vital for the success uh, for the success of, of this declaration. So what did Slovenia actually really do is they draw back 
on the independence and waited uh, for the official recognition for another three months. Uh, the Slovenian parliament passed the Prioni Declaration on July 10th, 1991. Uh, Yugoslavia didn't do it immediately, but on July 18th uh, also passed the declaration and the last uh, soldiers left Slovenia in the night of, in the night of October 25th. So the main points uh, that happened in this war uh, is that Slovenia actually played a diplomatic game that was extremely successful. Uh, at the right moments, uh, the politicians and diplomats knew when to follow strict line and when to give uh, on Yugoslav international pressure. And they knew when they have to comply in order to achieve uh, goals for the future. Slovenia also knew how to engage the media Slovenia knew how to engage mediators with good offices and how to engage them at the right moment. Sometimes Slovenia actually also played hopeless, uh, helpless, uh, just in order to get international support that they needed. Uh, Yugoslavia and the Yugoslav People's Army were stunned by the resistance, uh, Slovenians and Slovenian territorial defense. The civil population uh, were really uh, willing to do to gain uh, their independence. Uh, by the time the Grasso really uh, realized that, it was already too late. Uh, the people of this small country, we actually realized that uh, from the collective memory, that this was uh, the collective memory of all the oppressions throughout the history, that this was the time uh, for Slovenia to become independent, autonomous, and sovereign state. And uh, there was really no stopping in achieving that goal. Uh, of course, sending Slovenian soldiers uh, to fight on the Slovenian soil uh, was really not a good idea. Uh, it turned against, and they of course turned against the Yugoslav army. Uh, in the beginning of the war, the Yugoslav people army also did uh, the mistake of sending inexperienced soldiers to the war. But by the time really Yugoslavia recognized that, uh, realized that, it's, uh, that this was a mistake and that they didn't play a uh, diplomatic game, uh, it was already too, too late and Slovenia was able to fight. <laughs>